Hello and welcome to the Chapter 4 Summary Worksheet from the Introduction to Statistics Think and Do Book. And here we're just going to wrap up the chapter by doing a selection of problems. So I will go into full screen mode here. Good to go. Okay, so for problem number one, we have the data for the 100 senators, 100 of them from the 112th Congress of the United States. And I'm going to start randomly selecting senators. Right? And so if one senator is randomly selected, find the probability of getting a non-Republican. Well, uh, by the law of getting a non-Republican, you can do this either by counting up the non-Republicans or taking the probability of getting a Republican and subtracting that from one. So if you look at the Republican column, there's 47 here, right? So the probability of selecting a Republican is 47 out of 100. And so the probability of a non-Republican, that's 0.47 by the way, is just 1 minus 0.47, which is 0 .4, 0 0.53. And you could have done that just as easily by adding up these, right? 39 plus uh, 2 is 41 plus 12 is 53, right? So easy to do actually either way with the law of complements or just counting them up. Um, okay, so I'm going to I'm going to throw some total before I get into these. I'm going to throw some totals in here, and I'll get rid of this. All right. So let's see how many Democrats do we have? 39, 49, 51. And independents, two. Females, we have 17. And so males is going to be 83, right? Good. That, having these totals in just makes things a, a little easier. Okay, so what's the probability if you randomly select one um, senator of getting a male or a Republican? So with the or... What you should see is that we're going to be using the um, addition rule. So it's the probability of a male plus the probability of a Republican minus the probability of a male Republican. And we have to subtract that off because these two events, male or Republican, they are not mutually exclusive. Right. You can select a senator that is both a male and a Republican. So that's why we have to worry about this part. Okay, so the probability of getting a male, 83 out of 100. The probability of getting a Republican is 47 out of 100. And the probability of getting a male and a Republican, if I just added those two, I would be counting these twice. I don't want to count these twice, so I subtract off the probability of getting a male and a Republican. So you get 0.88. And you could have done that just as easily. If I said male or Republican, I would be looking at the 83 males and then the five Republicans that aren't males. Right? So either way, you get 88 out of 100, as long as you don't count anything twice. Okay, selecting one senator, what is the probability of getting a Democrat given that the senator is a female. In other words, I want you to find the probability of Democrat given female. Since I'm saying the senator is a female, what that means is I know it's one of these 17 females. All right? What's the probability of selecting a Democrat given that this senator is a female? That's the 12. Democrats out of 17 females. Come says I'm telling you it's a female. All right, so it's 12 out of 17, or 0.76. All right, so what is the probability of getting being a female? So basically, by, by the way, what this says is that 76 percent, sorry, se about 70 percent, or maybe I guess that rounds to 71. About 71 percent of the females are Democrats. Right? That's really what we're saying. It's not just about randomly selecting them. So 71% of the females are Democrats. So the, the, switching that around, what's the probability of selecting a female 
given that this senator is a Democrat. Notice that when you when you flip these two things around, you do not get the same answer. Probability of a Democrat given a female is not the same as the probability of a female given a Democrat. Because if you look at the probability of a female given a Democrat, well, what we have, um, you're given that it's a Democrat. So now you know it's one of these 51. And how many of them are female? 12. So the probability of female given Democrat, there's the total number of Democrats. 12 of them are female. You get 12 over 51 or 0.25. Right? Okay, so that's a little conditional probability for you. How about a uh, multiplication rule, number two? We have eight marbles, five are red, two are green, and one is blue. Let's see, find the probability of selecting two red marbles if the first selection is replaced. So that's with replacement. And if you recall, when you have with replacement, the events are independent. So that's good. That makes the rule a little bit easier. Uh, so what's the probability? By the way, the word and is implied here. I'm saying two red marbles. That means I need a red on the first and a red on the second. So the probability of getting a red on the first times the probability of the red on the second. There's five reds, eight marbles. So it's just five-eighths times five-eighths. 25 over 64, 0.391. And the next one, I ask the same question, what's the probability of selecting two red marbles, but the first selection is not replaced, so that is without replacement. And what that means is that these events are dependent. So that changes our formula a little bit. Probability of red on the first and a red on the second is the probability that you get a red on the first, now you have to multiply by the probability of getting a red on the second given you get a red on the first. So there's that first red, 5 out of 8. But now to get that second red, there's going to be one less red, so there's only four reds. And there's one less marble, so there's only seven marbles. So getting that second red is actually 4 out of 7. So you multiply them together, you get 0.357. Right. And again, a little easier to get two reds in a row with replacement. Sorry, yeah, with replacement than without. All right. Another one. Now we want a red on the first, followed by a green, and no replacement. All right. So again, these are dependent selections. So dependent events um, with. Uh, no replacement on the selections. So the probability of a red followed by a green, well the red is still 5 out of 8, and the probability of a green on the second given a red on the first, well there's still one less marble, so there's only 7 marbles, but since I'm holding a red, I have to assume I have a red, and then I still have two of my greens. And you multiply those together, 0.179. All right, you know, relative frequency probability. Scott shaves his face every morning. For the last 200 days, he has cut himself 36 times. Right. With the relative frequency approximation, find the probability that Scott will cut himself when he shaves tomorrow. Right. So that approximation, if I cut myself 36 out of the last 200 days, and the probability, my estimate for the probability of cutting myself tomorrow is 36 out of 200 or 0.18. Right? It's the relative frequency approximation to the probability. Okay, so use this approximation to determine the probability that he cuts himself two days in a row. By the way, Scott is me, so if you see me using the word me, that's because that's sort of who I'm talking about. <laughs> um, and in this case, we'll assume the events are independent. And what I mean is that if I cut myself on one day, it does not change the probability that I cut myself the next. 
although it probably does change a little bit. I'm a little more cautious after I've already cut myself recently. But in any case, we'll assume that the events are independent. And the probability that I cut myself on the first day is 0.18. And I have to cut myself on the second day. So I multiply by 0.18 to get 0.0324. So that's the probability of Scott cutting himself two days in a row, provided this relative frequency approximation is valid. So last year, he went 31 days without cutting himself. The last week, he cut himself three days in a row. All right, so that's three days of cutting himself in a row. And I'm, and, and here's the situation. When I went the entire month of August without cutting myself, I didn't throw myself a big party, but when I cut myself three days in a row, I was very upset. And, and what I want to figure out is which was, which was the more unusual event, right? So which has the lower probability of occurring if we were predicting it, right? So the probability of a cut-free August, well, there's 31 days, and so the probability that I don't cut myself on any given day, so if, if, if it's 0.18 that I cut myself, then it's 0.82 that uh, there's no cut. Right? So I need to get no cuts. I need to get 31 no cuts in a row. So that's going to be 0.82 times 0.82... 31 times, right? Two all the way up to 31. So I'm going to have to multiply 0.82 by itself 31 times. So that's where this comes from. This point zero zero two one three. Now what's the probability that I cut myself three times in a row? Well here, if it's 0.18 that I cut myself on the first day, and the second, and the third, then I just need 0.18 times 0.18 times 0.18. And again, we're assuming these events are independent. That's why I can just multiply them together like that. Or 0.18 cubed, which is 0 0.00583. So while I got very upset about the three days in a row, um, the probability that I go a whole month without cutting myself is actually a much bigger deal. That it's There's a... It's much smaller. The probability of that occurring is much smaller. So I should have at least thrown some sort of party having gone an entire month without cutting myself. If I'm going to throw a, a big fit whenever I cut myself three days in a row. Just to balance things out. Um, okay. Now we'll go back to our cancer screening device. Uh, it's the same contingency table. We have 200 people go through that have cancer. 200 that do not, and these are the results, right? And again, the person had cancer, and you get a positive result, that's good, but if you get a negative, that's bad, right? That means the person had cancer, but the machine came back, no cancer. And then the other type of error, the other bad point, is if there is no cancer, but it comes back with a positive. So that's bad as well. So this question is find the probability that a cancer-free person tests positive. And again, we did this a little earlier. And um, the cancer-free is right here, this group, these 200 right here. Cancer-free. And I want a positive test. So there's 200 of them. So it reduces, it's a conditional probability. It reduces my pool to just the 200 that do not have cancer. And 20 of them tested positive, so it's 20 out of 200 or point one zero or ten percent. Now I want to see what's the probability that you know if you start going in, you start sending people through these year after year after year, what's the probability that a cancer free person has ten cancer screenings in ten years? What is the per probability this person will have at least one false positive? Right. So no cancer goes in ten years. What's the probability of at least one false positive? Well, in this case, I'll let A, event A is the event that the person has at least one positive. And that's hard to calculate, so we go in through the back door and we calculate the probability of A bar. All right. And A bar is no false positives, or you get 10 negatives. 
So if I have a 10% chance, right, of getting a positive on some on an individual without cancer, then there's a 90% chance that it does not come back positive, right? So we'll go 90% negative, right? It's actually correct negative. So the probability of getting that 10 times in a row is 0 0.9 times 0 0.9 times 0 0.9 times 0 0.10 times, right? So 0 0.9 to the 10th, so it's between 3, 4, 9. But that's the probability of all negatives. So the probability of at least one false positive is 1 minus that, which is 0 0.651. And the idea is this, that if you start sending people um, to screenings every year, suddenly the probabilities of false positives can start adding up, right? So there's a 65% chance that after 10 years, um, a person without cancer with this particular device um, will experience at least one false positive. So that's, the, that's a selection of problems from Chapter 4, and that actually wraps it up for Chapter 4. So I will catch up with you in Chapter 5, provided I can stop this uh, recording. So you might have to listen to me work my way through this for a little while. I don't know what's going on with this, but it does take a, a few tries. Let's do one more. Oh, come on. Hmm. No. Uh, you can certainly stop the recording if you'd like. This is, oh, there we go. Goodbye.